Wow. That was super I'll... offensive. I can't believe you said that. Well, believe yeah, it, because Matt, I'll, I'll say more offensive things. Ready? Guts. And glory. Okay, well. I was going to say for God For the, the might of our Lord. In the, the home of the, the holy. Of the <laughs> In the home of the <laughs> holy. <laughs> While we the all three know that. Sword. <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't know you knew that, man. Give, Give the love so boldly. We're going to go for it. Great song. The uh, last, uh, the I last listen, stand. I listened to yeah. that on my way, on my way home. Deus Vault, everyone. What? Deus Vault, in the name of Sabaton. God. Yeah, Sabaton. Deus Vault, in the name of God. The guys, welcome. Speaking of God, welcome to Pop Culture Unboxing. <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, well, uh, when it's, it's speaking of pop culture unboxing, welcome back, Ryan. Hey, hey. We missed you. Did you? Yeah. Did. It seemed like you missed me. You guys were in the first episode I was gone. You guys were immediately talking about how now I'm part of the problem. That Now, we also come to figure out that the reason people are quitting this show is might be because of you, not me now. Yeah. Because you're the only person that's never quit the show. I did for a day or two. No, back around Christmas. So maybe the, the real mm. problem is the show itself. It could. Oh, it could be. It's not this any of us. Should we fire the show? That, oh, mm. Rebranding. I was gonna say that. I maybe. don't want to do another rebranding. <laughs> I don't either. It was such a pain in the butt last time. I don't either. Well, listen, it's gonna be just like the Call of Duty nuke event. We're just gonna nuke it, and the new map is just gonna be a reskin of the old one. So it's all gonna be the same <laughs> content. It's just gonna look a little different. We're just gonna hire three people that look and sound just like us <laughs> <laughs> to do the show. That is funny. Now, that is probably one of my favorite quotes. If uh, if everyone else has a problem with you, it might not be everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's true. And yeah, it, it, it I don't like it, though, because I do have a problem with everyone else. Like everyone else is just so annoying and they've always got all, the, all these opinions and stuff. It's weird that you have a podcast with two other people, but you find everybody grotesque and annoying. <laughs> like, it, does it make it better if I find myself grotesque and annoying? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So you're putting yourself on the <clears throat> same level as everyone else. Yeah. No. Oh, well, then, yeah, you're fine. Yeah. I hate everyone equally, including myself. <laughs> there you go. Don't worry. I hate you, Except too. Except for God. Bless up. <laughs> oh, he's oh, throwing the bless up. <laughs> oh, this guy's getting the hood. Ryan. <laughs> hey. How are you? I'm all right. Okay. I'm alive. Cool. I'm here. Well, I'm here. <laughs> that was the wrong. <laughs> should have, hey, I should have said wow, that. Wow, okay. Have, I have one thing on this show. <laughs> you have now taken it from me. <laughs> Zach, no. how are you? Hey, no, I'm living. Keeping the opposite from happening. Good. That's both of you now. Yeah. How are you, Matt? <laughs> you know, making it through the days. <laughs> Yeah, are you just? Try, we all try to find like variations of what he just was, said. I was, just like, I was gonna say you gave me a quick glance, and I was like, "Don't, <laughs> don't." There will be one episode where I'll just start repeating everything. I'll latch onto one of you and just start repeating everything you say. Oh, that'd be great. That would be great. <laughs> He's doing it now. <laughs> Mass try to figure out if he can if he can just uh, single handedly do the show by himself by just trying to pretend to I be. I don't want us. to. I that'd thought be, about it. That would be a fun I episode. Thought, I had thought about it because I'm like, if Zach isn't available or whatever, I'll have to do it by myself. And I don't know if I want to <laughs> do it by myself. You know what you should do? No, he, what you should do is still set the three mics up. Yeah. And just what you do is just when it's your time to talk, you go to your mic. When it's my time, you come to my <laughs> mic and do an impersonation of me. And then you go to Zach. And then when we're talking over each other, you just put them both to your mouth and pretend that you're just doing this. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like I'm glad we're not doing video because that visual you just made was, yeah. was real. Uh, I was thinking I it. I see now why uh, I was you didn't do the it. video. I was thinking it. I no, because I look god awful today. I'm all Insane. sweaty, gross. My Insane. hair looks bad. My hair looks Shout bad. Shout out to Sweat Gross. All right. Two, two Zach, sweat are you lords over gross? here. No, I actually wow, take loser. hygienic care of do you, myself. Do you have holes in your shirt? It's a holy shirt. Oh wow! Well, you know what? I do. This shirt is. You look every day I see you. 10... you look more and more homeless. <laughs> this shirt is eleven years old. <laughs> Again, you look more and more homeless. Well, How do I look more and more homeless? Well, your beard's longer. You used to have really. I just shaved it. Your hair used to be all messy, and your your beard was really long. Look at this. Ryan gets all cleaned up, and then he starts gunning on us about not looking clean enough. I was like, I literally just shaved. (laughs) He's wearing a he's wearing a goddamn uh, polo shirt. (laughs) That's because it's the new style for 
sad sweaty was, boys. Was, <laughs> sad I, sweaty boys. I was, I was gonna that's say, our new I, podcast. I, I, sad sweaty boys. That's gonna be my new Discord name. The sad sweaty boy. The group. What you if know, one I, of us is sad and one of us is sweaty and one of us is boys? Oh, uh, when we fuse together, sad, we become the boys. sad sweaty boys. I already tried oh, to take Asian in me because I saw Asian as a picture. You mean Victor. Was that his his real name? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know his real name. All I know him is what you guys call him. Yeah. But I saw that he has around a, polite company. I use his real name, which is Victor. On Discord, he has a we're picture. Polite. He has a he has a mm-hmm. we're polite. Uh, occasionally on Discord, he has <laughs> when an, it's profitable. He has an emoji of his foot. So I had no. Had, I did that. He uh, he sent a picture of some Destiny thing he got, and it was big, so it was laying on the floor, and the picture included his foot in it. I immediately went into Photoshop and Photoshopped out his foot and made it an emoji in our so, server. Well, what I wow. had the idea was I was gonna take that a picture of his because i think that's his is that his like right foot uh i think so yeah i take a picture of my left foot and i was gonna make like a gif video of like if you're in dragon ball z where they do the fusion dance and oh, they fuse God. together i was gonna have our feet fuse and just name ourselves like a mixture of our names the only thing i could come up was raisin <laughs> was <the name. laughs> so, I was, <laughs> so i was gonna have like the videos like they come together like in the in the broly movie that they fuse together there's like a scene where the the new fusion of them, which is Gogeta, is like trying to figure out his name. He's like, "We well, need to have a cool name." He's like, "How about Gogeta?" And that's and I was like, "Oh man, I could use that whole scene, just paste over our f- <laughs> over the faces, our feet." And just, but then when they combine, just have, the, it's just two feet doing a butterfly. Or they become the California raisins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I the thought, band from. Back I thought then. about doing that and just posting that one day on like a disc out of, out of the blue in the me- in like the Weeb's channel. <laughs> so. God. Don't tell him if he listens to this episode. He doesn't. None of them do. They're not good friends. Good, because I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna one day post that. Or what I was gonna do is try to convince him to send me pictures of like his hands and his feet, and then make Yu Gi Oh cards of like the <laughs> one, the, He'd be on the board feet of the forbidden ones. But <laughs> dude, he has like three thousand hours in Yu Gi Oh Duel Links. I believe that. What? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Dude, he, he likes his Yu Gi Oh man. Do you want to talk about like, what you like the news in your life? <gasps> not it, yet, because um. I have other things going on in my family that I don't want to overshadow. And then once that is done... Do they listen to this? Zach I has news. So. Yes. Cliffhanger. Yeah, there you go. Ryan, That's just do you have any news? Uh, I don't you know. You can say no. It's acceptable. We'll just say I was gone for family reasons. That's all. Yeah, okay. Let's go for family emergency reasons. Yep. And Ryan gets maybe a little... Don't go to my Twitter or something. I may have had some little depressing nights or something. <laughs> Okay, Maybe some Ryan. pictures of a it's bunch okay, of beer Ryan. bottles. We still love you. Right, everyone? Say it. Everyone on the show, all together now. We, we love you, Ryan. Ryan. Oh, I we didn't tell. practice that he either. That was he, great. No, he didn't say it either. I noticed that. I, I, I have to say I love you, <laughs> yes, Ryan, Yes, let's try too. again. Yes. Okay. We love you. We, uh, we, <laughs> we love Can we get a countdown before? We... Three, two, one. We love, love you, Ryan. Ryan. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like how there's like all these extra space between every syllable when we do that. <laughs> so great <laughs> wasn't there one episode where zach and i tried to talk at the same time the yeah. whole way through <laughs> we we did really well i think I wanna, like for about 10 seconds and then it, yeah. it just like yeah crumbled. so proof that i listen to the episodes when i'm not here and i listen we to didn't our need episodes. proof but okay well we, we, you want faith in you actually you one time did question you're like see he doesn't listen to these episodes <laughs> proof that <laughs> we i do listen that to everybody when we're proof that <laughs> i listen to these here. episodes uh i want to talk to you about something you were wrong about uh-oh. And you went for a long time. And the bad thing it makes me what made me angry is I was sitting here on the floor because listening to it because I was doing something. And uh all I could think in my head is just like you have a computer in front of you, Matt. Just look it up. It was the one thing in the whole episode you didn't Google. Yes, I, did. I could tell. It's what I think it is. I did Google it and I didn't look that closely at it. Okay. Well, uh, remember how you talked about a film called Spy Spy Me, Spot, whatever. The film that you were you kept saying uh, uh, Melissa McCarthy and who's the other woman? Uh, Anne Hathaway. Did a film together. Or like one was like a super secret agent spy. One, not not very accurate. She's just like a uh, like a gold digger and she's just teaching uh, the, the character who you thought uh, Melissa McCarthy was playing. But really, it was the Australian woman from Pitch Perfect. Rebel so the Wilson. whole time, I'm listening to you say the wrong actress. I'm like, this is very frustrating. This is why we need a live audience. To- I actually Googled it just to see what the name was, and I just saw the name and then called it a day. I didn't look at all at any of who was in it or anything. Well, you heard it here first, guys. You can't trust us. You're right. We, we give bad information. We have bad takes. 
I also but like. Man, are we funny? I love how I gave you guys articles to talk about, and the only thing you had to say about the articles was Ryan's not here, so we don't. <laughs> so let's not talk about it. That's yeah, not you know, here. The first I had article. Legitimate reasons. The for first that. article you were like, "Well, Black Adam," but we don't know anything about DC, so without Ryan here, we're not going to talk about <laughs> it. And was... then the other stuff, I was like, "Just read the articles, man. Just read them. They all tell you enough." <laughs> they just well, did... that, that was the big thing. Is like I think both of us sat down and both of us were like, "We don't know enough like background knowledge, so it's just going to be us going." Into the article and saying, logic, hey, this is the article. Our logic was also, that's the thing, is it would, it would have been that, but also, you probably put them in there because you'd like to talk about them as well. We did watch the Army of the Dead trailer. Mm-hmm. Good job. Good. I'm gonna, I, we, we got the vibe that this is a world that already had zombies in it, but now they found new, better zombies. Is yeah. that correct? I don't know. Oh. I, I was, think so. I, that's, a, that's a fair guess. I okay. was going to say, I got the vibe that they... There was a zombie outbreak, but they contained it, which isn't very, which isn't normal for they the regular contain, zombie outbreaks. They contained yeah. it in Las Vegas, the most unlikely place to contain a like a, a zombie apocalypse. Well, I mean, twenty eight weeks later was something similar. The, I, the outbreak had already been dealt with, and then a new one starts. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. going to be like a combination of like payday and The Last of Us. Yeah, and it's a heist movie. Fallout New Vegas. Yeah, heist movie in a post-apocalyptic Vegas covered yeah. in zombie hordes. Yeah, there we go. And I am a little sprinkling of I Am Legend because it looks like the zombies are smart, even no. though in I Am Legend they're supposed to be vampires. Really? Hmm? Omega Man. It was vampires. <laughs> it was just Mega Man vampires. Omega Man. Oh, I was gonna say it's like, uh, that'd be and, funny. And, it's just a bunch of Mega Man just well, running yeah, down. And the, and the twist eat. got gutted out of that movie. You know what the actual twist was supposed to be. That they were actually more human than wasn't yeah. it? Like he was supposed to survive, wasn't he? Yeah, he, he was. He was the monster, is what. Yeah, he, he learned he's the monster because they're just normal people. Just yeah, this is just like the next evolution of humans. And he's this monster that's hunting them because mm-hmm. he's trying to make them back into humans, but they have their own society now. But then the movie just mm-hmm. bails out and makes them typical zombies, despite laying the breadcrumbs that they were more intelligent than you're supposed than you think. Yeah, it is kind of interesting. It like like they set it up to where it's like they're going somewhere, but that's yeah. also one of the things like throughout the research he's like like not much has changed and it isn't until recently he's like, Well, it actually looks like they're starting to communicate with each other like they weren't before. Yeah. So it sounds it sounds like uh every um paranormal movie I've ever watched where it's like <laughs> these are based on true events and the only thing that's true is like the name of the doll. Yeah. It's like, it's like nothing else is, is correct. It's exactly. probably the same thing with I Am Legend. It's like yeah. it's like it's based on a book called I Am Legend, and no. that's it. <laughs> no, the book's not even called I Am Legend. The oh, book is, is it? called Omega, Omega Man. Oh, and oh, there oh. was a there was an Omega. It, there was a movie also called Omega Man, starring I believe Charlton Heston, mm-hmm. back in the fifties or sixties. Mm. And it has their vampires, and it has the book ending. But then they actually shot the book ending for the Will Smith I Am Legend, and it didn't screen well test audiences didn't like it and so they did uh, the ending we have now where he blows himself up and they're just mindless zombies so it's a great movie that guts itself in the last 10 minutes <clears throat> i didn't even think it was that good of a movie it was all right i mean killing the dog was sad i, I made the mistake yeah. of watching that like a week after my dog died oh no and my my uh, girlfriend and i uh had just started dating not at pod. the time and it was like I I forgot about the scene until until the dog got bit, and I was like, oh, and she looks at me and goes, oh, and I was like, oh, <laughs> and she was like, we can change it. I was like, mm-hmm, you can change it now. <laughs> then we stopped watching it. Totally not Pog. No, sorry, not Pog. Not he starts streaming and now he's talking in Twitch emotes. <laughs> <laughs> what is Pog? I don't know. I don't Pog know. Champ. It means awesome, basically. Yeah, that was awesome. Or that's the way I've cool. I've learned to to take it. Like P O G. What does it actually stand for? Uh, it was the name of some streamer who made the emote on Twitch. Oh. There's the it it those the prefix is like the first three or so letters of the streamer's name, and then what the emote is called. Mm. So you get Pog Champ, um, and some others. The Keck W guy died. Mm-hmm. Keck W. Is, that's a fun evolution of language. Because Keck directly translates to LOL. Hmm. But it's because World of Warcraft, one of the races in it, if you read their chat while you're the other 
like I think it's Alliance and Horde. I think it's Horde. Mm-hmm. If you're Alliance and you read a Horde message, LOL translates to K E K. So Keck on the internet has come to mean LOL. Huh. The internet's a weird place. It is. There's some there's the internet has like its it's own creepy. language development. We speak in memes. Yeah. 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 I mean, for memes people who don't know what the Keck guy is, if you've ever seen uh the video of like the the guys I don't think he has all his teeth, but he's like no. laughing constantly laughing just like a re- i don't even know how to explain the laugh uh you can put like a link or something to like yeah. a video of it or it's just a very uh <laughs> it's a very infectious laugh yeah he's just obviously really enjoying the story he's telling and i don't know what story he's telling because i don't speak the language he's speaking i don't think the guy that was interviewing him speaks the language he was speaking <laughs> i don't think so either <laughs> but they like were the- all laughing along yeah because it's just the laugh is hilarious yeah um that's great one thing I want to talk about with you guys. Oh, and okay. I, I mean, you didn't Are see Are we getting it. the talk? Yes. Oh. Uh, oh, Cap- one last death. Michael Collins. Oh, yeah. The, hmm. uh, the astronaut. He is the forgotten third man who was in the Apollo 11 mission. He was the one who stayed mm-hmm. up in the module while Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong went to the moon. Uh, he, he, I believe he still holds the distinction of being the man furthest from any other human being ever. Oh, because when he was on the far side of the moon, he was that far oh. away from them. Oh, and also, wow. I think the I think that also makes him the furthest any person's ever been from Earth. Yeah, so, probably. And now he died at uh, ninety. Wow, so, good for him. Yeah. R.I.P. It was cancer, I believe. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. Now you could talk about your thing. Uh, F- Falcon and the Winter Soldier. <laughs> no? Just yeah. it, it, it is concluded after six episodes. Uh, I have the same opinion of this that I do with, uh, well, yeah, I have the same opinion of this as I do with like the Scarlet Witch show. Okay. Um, this show did not end, this show feels like it ended too quickly and not a lot really happened. Yeah. Mm. Um, but this one, I think. This is more evidence of like the WandaVision thing where WandaVision just needed to do reshoots just to change a few things. This show had to do a complete reshoot because of what the plot was. Yep. Uh, and it's very apparent once you see, once you really watch the show, that yeah. the real plot was going to be some sort of virus, like a, a pandemic problem. Mm-hmm. And they were, they made the, <laughs> what I believe was the smart decision to just be like, let's, there's people that are dying of a pandemic right now. Let's not make light or make a. Let's not try to make money or entertainment off of that. Yeah. Even though we talk about some China stuff, but let's <laughs> put that rug that under the rug for right now. <laughs> um, but this show feels like six episodes wasn't enough. I feel like yep. by the time we got to the big reveal that was, what one of many reveals that came that was very obvious, which was one of them was like, yeah, that's how it should have happened. The other one was like, yeah, that's feels that that was not supposed to be the plan yeah uh so spoilers ahead for now from this point on i'm going to talk about the show we're going to spoil a little bit if you haven't watched it you're never going to watch it at this point yeah zach yeah i probably (laughs) Um, won't (laughs) but i will say show's really good i like i really enjoyed everything this is the first time i really enjoyed superhero film without the superhero portions i really like the like down to like i love was great oh yeah the dance Mm -hmm. man Ah, oh, that's a gift that's going on Twitch somehow for me. Um, but the, his like dance skills, awesome. Uh, I like the the idea of basically watching Bucky suffer, like trying to sleep and figure out how he can be like how he can forgive himself for all the people he's killed, being the Winter Soldier. Even though and dealing with the kind of like it wasn't me who killed them, I was brainwashed. But it's it was a better. Everyone always like. Like the brainwash person, like oh, I was brainwashed, and they forgive them most of the time when yeah. that's like a plot point. This, like, it actually down, like, he still feels terrible for what he did, yeah. and that doesn't change. Like, brainwash doesn't matter to him. Everyone else, like the government, still looks at him like you were just brainwashed. It's okay. He's like, but I, not to me. It's not a well, I, yeah. you didn't. Your your hands are not. No. And uh, sounds like they how, took a different approach to it. Did a fantastic. Uh, I, I, I they still did believed until they, at the until time they that's got to the right. final resolution of it. Yeah, the final resolution just goes by so qu- like. Well, it goes by quick, but it was a thing of like I think it should. It would have been better if they had just had him arrive at the guy's door and cut it there. Because the problem is that his discussion with the guy with that guy, there was no way to make that 
both feel real and heartfelt with what he would have had to say to the guy. I agree. And the show that that's one of the that's one of the thing it tells me that if COVID never happened, this show would not have been six episodes. It would have been no. longer. It would have been eight or ten. Yeah. Um. Because mm-hmm. the flag smasher story got gutted. You yeah. Can tell. Um, like because. The big thing, and they set up Carly. They almost set her up like she's supposed to be the re- a redeemed villain by the end, mm-hmm. and she's not. Like the most redemption she gets is she says, "I'm sorry," right before she dies. But that was five minutes after she set fire to a truck full of innocent people. Yeah. So I do like that Sam took the way that Sam came about it when he like he went to the that group the the. Government officials. The I think it was the UN, right? Uh, they were like the stand-in for the world government or something. Yeah, but right in the middle of the street, in front of the cameras. Yeah, like in front of the cameras in his new suit because he becomes Captain America, which was mm. supposed spoiler to, alert supposed to happen. Looks super cool though. I think there's a little too much white on the top, that, like the shoulders and chest area. If you would it needs see, a little more. Did color you look at the comic up. book version of that suit? No, not if closely. you look. If you look at it, it's exactly the same. Like it? It, it's very reminiscent of that. Just, That's why I, they. I don't did think it. it translates well to the screen. I think it just need a little more in like the upper chest and shoulders. Area. I think they will change mm. it for the future. But well, yeah. um, what what he said, basically coming in like a short paraphrase version of what he basically said. He's just like, we need like you're labeling these people terrorists. Meanwhile, you're not letting them sit in the room to tell you why they're doing what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. You have no, you don't have the courage to ask why are these people doing what they're doing. You just want to label them as terrorists. But, yeah. And then you want to make the decisions. Like you're making the decisions of what needs to be done with these refugees and what needs to be done with those people. But you're not letting them sit in the room explain why they're there. Yeah. And like it, instead, you're just, it, which I, is is. A realistic problem that we have in the world today in different countries. And Sam was right about everything he said. Something didn't sit right with me about that scene. And I think what I realized it was is that they in a re, in the real world they would have just walked away. They yes. wouldn't have listened to what he was saying. Exactly. That's the thing. Is it but for but, for so, but I think that because that scene I think in particular was one of the ones that was reshot for COVID. I think so. Um I think a better way to have done it would have been to have some situation where they're forced to listen to him. Yeah. Like they can't really leave like a hearing or something where he they can't stop him from saying that. And they also one thing that I didn't that I thought was like, yeah, that's a plot line that they should go into because it would make it does make sense to what they were it in real life, this is exactly how the world would have reacted to the ideas. Like that one guy, Isaiah Bradley, says to him, is like, you know, there'll never be a black Captain America. It yeah. can't happen. And even if he did even if there was, why would you want to be? And then Sam's just like, I'm going to make Captain America be the symbol that he's supposed to be. I'm not, it doesn't matter who it is under the mask. It's, it's the fact that everything that, that, uh, the original cap stood for, those are values of the true American way. And we need to, if, if the world needs, if we need to still keep those in mind and stop pretending that it matters, which I do like that because I do think he's right that people would have had a problem with it. The problem is that problem never comes up. The moment yes. he appears, someone says, "Is that the fal- is that the Black Falcon?" And someone just says, "No, that's Captain America." And that's yeah. it. So everyone's I think, now accepting. I think of watching it. that scene, I think I actually said out loud, "Hey, thanks, show. Thanks for telling me what I what, what to think here, show." Yeah, that's the um, thing. Is <laughs> but that's the thing. And what I, I was talking to my dad about it before the last episode came out, mm-hmm. and to pay off the whole Isaiah and Sam thing, we our theory was that something was going to happen when he was revealed. That these higher up government officials and reporters and stuff reject him and and reject him for being black and Captain America, but he is around a crowd of people and they're all just cheering. Yeah, they're fine with it. Kind of showing that the average person doesn't care. Like, I they want Cap. They're they're happy Captain hmm. America is here to help them. I think that what they were trying to do was the fact that Isaiah Bradley was still stuck in that mindset of like, like he was still stuck in the mindset of because he he was in a situation. Like he was growing up when, when they were fighting for their right to be treated as equals. You yeah. know what I mean? So I think what happened is like he was still stuck on that PTSD mode. It was like they'll never accept us. But really, Falcon, like Sam was like, no, the world's different now. Yeah. Like you need, I can show you, I can prove it. The world's different yeah. now. And he did something good, I think, with the fact that Isaiah Bradley was a super soldier, basically tortured by our government or yeah. by the government, I guess. Is, it's That's pretty, put, I think it's objectively supposed to be the United States government. But he's he's tortured by the government as a science experiment and never yeah. treat and then he faked his own death so they would 
never see find him again. No. For Sam to put him in in the in a hall in like a museum as like a memory. That, they edited it in a good way. It's they just did. I feel like there was more that needed to be done. Yeah, there <laughs> they, was. They and, sped through and so I much I think stuff. one other issue with that was I, I felt like the, for the first four or five episodes, they wanted the audience to think, oh, is the, Captain America going to be Sam or is it going to be Bucky? I kind of felt like they wanted us to think that because Sam doesn't want the shield, but Bucky wants someone to hold the shield. He doesn't want to hold it, so maybe he reluctantly picks it up. But as soon as Isaiah said they'll never let a black man be uh, Captain America... I'm like, oh, it's Sam. Well, it was always going to be Sam. It, yeah. See, that's the thing. But as someone who doesn't know the comics and stuff like that, who's just really watching the show and taking it as it comes. I think the show builds it up that it's supposed to be Sam. Does it? Yeah, because every time that every time that Bucky gets a chance, like even that big scene where uh, they get the shield back after fighting the, what is, who is the Walker. New, Walker, the new Captain America at the time, he like picks the shield up and just throws it down there. And even... It, even in like dialogue situations, like he expressed, like uh, Steve told Bucky all along that like this was the plan. Yeah, like he knew it, so he was honoring Steve's plan. He didn't want it because he knew that's what Steve wanted, so he was going to constantly give it to Sam no matter what. Yeah. So they but impl- to be fair, that scene you're talking about happened after this conversation with Isaiah. So maybe I was reading too much into the show, but I felt well, like that's it the was thing trying is- to who's going to be it. But then as soon as he says that, it's like, oh, it's going to be Sam because the show's not going to say, yeah, Isaiah was right. Yeah. Well, the, they aren't going to let a black man be Captain America. Well, and then that's the problem with a lot of these like director choices now. They think a lot of their opinions are like fringe opinions. And in reality, they're actually the majority opinion. So <laughs> like, like when you say things like that, like there's not a lot of people out there that are thinking that it's going to go the opposite direction. Well, that wasn't their goal, though. Like, in this story, the, the goal was to show, you know, how the world has improved and mm-hmm. yeah well yeah it was and show sam surprising as being in the me. middle he, sam being stuck in the middle because he's already because they did it with the cop scene yeah where they were these uh so he's in this neighborhood talking to uh isaiah who is a former uh, super yeah. soldier who's black mm-hmm. and it's kind of a uh a rundown neighborhood mm-hmm. cops pull up and they stop sam and bucky and they're like and they're talking to sam like they're looking to start something yeah because they're like and sam, then they but, recognize him yeah and they, then they back down and it's like, oh, so it was okay before you knew he was the Falcon. Yeah. And so that kind of just drives the nail home on what Isaiah had been talking about. That was the thing. And like, it was done well. It well, was done mm, well. And that's that's the thing is it was a majority. It was. A, it, and here, here's the thing. And this is where I was like, I have a feeling I know where this show's going to go. And it didn't go there. I was so sure that being Disney, being like Disney, what they're doing is they were going to overshoot the like w- that woke culture idea like. You know, like the mm. like every white person's racist and stuff like that. They didn't no. actually. They kind of made it because I was expecting, and I do kind of believe, if the show was longer, we would have had more. We would have mm. had more people hating the fact that it was a black Captain America. Uh, I no. I still think that's going to happen. But no, we're they, not. That, if you see that, it's going to be super fringe opinions. That's but, what I mean. But I I was expecting it. But the fact, I like the idea that they left on the fact that yeah, see, the world is different. Like we're like the racist ties is in the past and people are more everyone's equal in you know, that's what they were trying everyone's to play. Everyone's equal with. in God's eyes, bless up. <laughs> that's what they were trying <laughs> to play off though. So that's the thing is I thought the show was gonna do something different and it did I thought the show was gonna be predictable. Uh and at least in this concept, it was not predictable nah. at all. Yeah, I'm, I I I may actually have to to, to find a way to watch it. Because it sounds really, it sounds it like is. all the things that they're talking about are and this is this is common in Hollywood, so I'm making assumptions. But it's common in Hollywood to talk about specific issues that are going on today, and then kind of like tell you well, what to think. And to, yeah. and to be and fair, like, and I haven't seen it, so I can't tell. The stuff we're but, talking about right now is kind of a minor subplot to it. Mm, the yeah. major plot is kind of an analysis of terrorism and versus freedom fighting. Yeah, and you know what? How, what's the right way to protest uh, decisions and? Things you believe are unjust. Mm, yes. That's the major drive of this show, and it does it. It does it okay. It just it runs into the issue that they had to they had to gut the show because of COVID. Yeah, yeah and but the, otherwise, and that's a big I deal re- too. my uh, main opinion is I really like the show. I like it more than too. Wandavision. I do. I do Wandavision too. shot itself in the foot in the last half well, hour. That's of the, I'm almost the show. sure. At, out of the big three, the Loki series. 
WandaVision and this, I think this is going to be the top the contend. Like, yeah. This is going to be the main one that we get out of them that we like. Well, this is one the best because I didn't get, I didn't get to see any of it, any of it, but this is the one that I was excited about because they built Sam up from the beginning mm-hmm. to be someone who was capable of taking over. And then they also built Bucky up as someone who was capable of finding redemption. Yeah. So it was one of those things where it's like, okay, I can get something out of both of you being Captain America. You could either, you can go in a bunch of different directions with both characters because both of them had a rich enough background um, to where you could have a whole bunch I'll, of different setups. Dude, I'll give you my login if you don't want to pay for it just mm-hmm. to watch the show. Like, yeah, I'll is. give you, I'm telling you what, man, that's pretty good. And there are some Easter eggs in this that are so good, well, that are so well thought out. So there's out. the one. It's not so much an Easter egg as uh, what's her name's character that shows up twice. Uh, Walker's lawyer. Have you oh, heard about her? Yeah, she, the Madam, basically Madam Hydra. If you yeah. like, depending on which well, but have you, but have you heard where we were supposed to see her first? Yeah, Black, Black Widow, Widow, which we already knew was going to show the Thunderbolts off. So like, she's yeah. gonna she's gonna create the Thunderbolts. So are they setting up Secret Invasion? Do you think? I think because her one comment at the end of the show, uh, she makes a comment at the end of the show. Once we see Walker's new costume, because he becomes the U.S. agent. Um. Once we see his new get up, she says things are going to get weird hmm. and where we're going, we're not going to need Captain America, which tells me multiverse with the multiverse stuff finally happening. Yeah, I think that that's her way of saying I think it's also like the theory that people are saying like that shield isn't like where she says like, you know, technically that shield doesn't belong to the government. It's kind of a a a gray area yeah tells me there could be a shot that like they might be finding out that that shield is not from our world like the actual captain america shield Mm. that was broken that's not that shield repaired that's a multiverse shield that's a shield from another universe from oh yeah when did it get repaired that's what i mean so that's what people just has the shield that's right so that's what people people are thinking that what while all this is happening Spider, the multiverse of madness is happening, yeah. which is then gonna, which I I think that that's what we're gonna find out is like the multiverse huh. is going to be the big, for I think what they're my opinion or what I believe they're gonna do is instead of like Thanos being the big guy that we're building up, the real enemy is like the multiverse and what that means for the the future of the MCU, and I think that's That'd gonna be, be cool. the and I think I mean that's probably the best way to do it. I mean, yeah, you could have like Galactus and all that yeah. stuff, but I still think I, this is something I've been worried about. Is I'm worried that they're afraid to pigeonhole themselves, so they're gonna find a way to leave any storyline open. Well, yeah, and then and then the the quality is just gonna go down because like Not necessarily. Well, and, and what I mean by that is like, I don't if, know. If, if, if you open it up to a multiverse, well, then you can go to a universe where Cap never didn't stay with Peggy and now Cap's back. And then yeah, and sure it's one of those things where it's like you can open up some cool ideas, but also you can never make a mistake now well, we, because now you can just jump from universe to universe and try things. We already and, know that's going to happen, though, because uh, Cap there. Uh, what's his name that plays Cap? Uh, Chris Evans. Chris, Chris Evans. Evans is coming back to play Captain America in, in some untitled thing. Mm. So we know he's coming back. So the thing is, is he coming back to the MCU or is he coming back in our, in this universe, this timeline, mm. or are we going to get multiverse shenanigans, which is well, probably what we're going to have. In, in and that's kind of that, what, I, and that's the only thing I'm concerned about is when you get into multiverse shenanigans, it's like it, you, you get to a point where like, I don't think it's any different than, uh, you know, you could have said the same thing about MCU starting to go to space. It, if it's written well, it can be done really. It gives you so many opportunities. I tell you what, if they, the only thing that I can say to like contend about what you're thinking mm-hmm. is if Marvel continues to put the effort and and the money into things into what into the same into the future projects the way they did Falcon and the Winter Soldier mm-hmm. and Wandavision, I'm thinking that. The future is pretty bright for Marvel. Now, I don't think the Marvel that we grew up like, Marvel is not gonna be. I don't think like an end game situation is ever gonna be. We're not gonna have another that in the MCU. We're not gonna mm. have that high moment. No, because yeah. it's never been done before in cinema. Yeah, like that's mm-hmm. why a lot of people. I think like with uh, Shapiro saying like he thinks that this this next generation of superhero films like this is gonna be DC's turn. 
I think that's the that's I think what's going to happen is we're still going to get amazing Marvel content. Mm-hmm. I just think now DC is going to eventually get that high point. What is that yeah. though? We don't know. Yeah. But, so I th- I think I think a better way of explaining what what I'm saying because like I like I I agree they they have the quality behind it mm-hmm. to still make good stories, but um if you guys ever played the Assassin's Creed series, I have yeah. So like. Yeah. Okay, so the Assassin's Creed series is really good. The idea is that there's this guy that, like, there's this machine. The Animus. That your D- your DNA actually maintains memory. Mm-hmm. So when you get into the machine, you can see your ancestors in the past. Yeah. It was good for, I think, about the first six games. Hmm. And then after that, they, like, they didn't want to, like, pigeonhole themselves so they opened it up, and then when they opened it up, there was no... You never knew where you were going from that point on. And that's what I'm concerned about with, with the multiverse, is that, like, like the entire first phase of, of Marvel was, okay, this is going somewhere. I don't know where it's going yet, but it's going somewhere. Mm-hmm. And then if you open it up to the multiverse, well, now it doesn't necessarily have to go somewhere. And then that's where you start to like devolve in your quality until maybe they pick it back up and say, okay, now we're going somewhere. I think that's what I think. I think that's what the why they have Marvel What If coming out. Mm. I think Marvel What If is going to be that like they're going to do animated versions of these to show you like this is this is this is something could have happened, like Mm. Peggy getting the Super Soldier Serum and becoming uh, like Captain Britain, and Mm. if (laughs) if they do that. Like, I think what they'll do is they'll take that as like, oh, people really like that idea. Okay, that's a multiverse ser- story. No, we're we're actually going to do it. Yeah. I think that's what... See, with as long as Kevin Feige continues to, to be a part in the way that he plans to be a part, I think mm. he's going to be able to keep it all grounded because if, out of anything, where Disney wants it to be money-making, Kevin Feige knows how to make it money-making and still pay attention to what, like... The, they want, yeah. You know, what well, I mean, it's, want. it's just a matter of be, writing good stuff and hiring the right people, hiring the right actors, mm-hmm. hiring the right directors, hiring the right writers. And Disney does that, and they got the money to do it. And here's the thing: Disney does not like as long as you stick to a certain formula, like you put in these pieces to help connect all these other films. They let the directors go wild. They're like, mm-hmm. you do yeah. whatever you want to do, and that's and the that's why Taika Waititi did. Riding Rock is the moment that they said you here's the keys have fun he was like all right you tell me when i can say no they're like we don't care keep going just do what <laughs> you want and that's how we got Riding Rock and that's when they realized like oh if we just let directors do what they want it's the same so, when you guys were talking about Shazam Shazam is good because it's the only film in the DC EU right now that Warner Bros didn't think was going to be successful so they didn't they didn't interfere yeah. And yeah. they hired a director who only does horror films. That's what, if you ever think, the only two films that people love in the DCE right now are Aquaman and Shazam. Those two films were a director's, an, a, a relatively unknown director who only made horror films. Yeah. They gave them an option to do this. Adam Wingard, do, uh, he did Godzilla vs. Kong. He was, on, he was pretty unknown. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Is like they, they when they let them do this, and they say, like, we do this, and say, let's just give these guys a shot, but let them have the reins. Mm-hmm. Turns out, good content comes out because then you see the artists making art, not mm-hmm. making. Well, not and, and to part make of a it is in letting the uh, director put their fingerprint on stuff like that let, sets all the movies apart from each other. It gives them yeah. a different tone. Um, you can see I the think, unique styles, which also helps exactly. build the uniqueness of each character. And then when you bring yeah. them all together. You, like the person who's bringing them together can sit down with all of them and say, okay, what would your character do here? What would your character do here? And like, we yeah. need them to interact. How would they handle it? And well, like, yeah, you can collaborate. John Favreau's direction of Iron Man would have been much different from Ron Howard's. Yeah. Or be, or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause so like, I feel like Kevin Feige, he goes to Taika Waititi and says, make whatever movie you want here. The major story beats are Hulk and Thor have to meet up. We have to get Valkyrie. Uh, Asgard has to be destroyed. They have to end up on Earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, if you, as long as you fulfill those steps, put whatever you want in between them. Yeah, because that yeah. puts that brings us to the next movie. Uh, or no, they don't get to Earth. Literally, Asgard destroyed. Have all the Asgardians on a ship, and Hulk and Thor are there on their Loki. way to Earth. I just yeah. say on their way to Earth. Yeah, and that's how it ends. Um, one other thing, that like what I said about like the DC th- films, I I laugh. Uh, there was a guy that made a comment. He said. 
Shazam and Aquaman are evidence that are proof the idea that the only way to be a funny comedian is to be super screwed up in the head. <laughs> so it's yeah. Like, it's like those directors prove that that James concept Gunn. has to... Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Speaking of which, we're almost time for his Suicide Squad movie. Is, when does that come out? Uh, a couple months from now, right? I don't know. You look it up. Let me use the Google machine. I'll see. That's the one with all of... like. There's like hundreds of characters in it. Oh my god! Uh, well, I, I said arms fall off. Two hundred and thirteen or so, to be so precise. Arms fall off. Man. Yeah. Uh, no, wrong one. Suicide Squad. Dose. Yeah, because I know that they they tease like a ton of villains in it. Uh, oh, August sixth. August sixth. So oh, we're a couple months out me. still. We're really excited for uh, that. Film. Speaking of movies, though, you surprised me with one that apparently came out already. I was going to talk about. I was just thinking about moving into this next subject. So, to end it on this. Falcon and Winter Soldier is a pretty good show. I'd uh, say it's really good. Yeah, really good show with with some with some minor problems. Oh, the one other thing, the last thing about that, the Sharon Carter being the power broker. Yes. Thing. Uh do you think she's a scroll? I think so. Okay. I think so. And uh the only thing that, c- that gives me evidence that she is is the fact that everyone that has met her that says they have met the power broker for knows it as a guy. <laughs> really? Well, did you ever think that Zemo always says like about the power broker before they announced that Sharon, Sharon Carter was the power broker? Uh, he always says like he's a he's a strange man or he, he always has his eyes. They always mentioned he. Yeah. And now, granted, what I think they could what was supposed to happen is again the show was supposed to be longer. The power broker was supposed to appear, and yeah. Sharon was going to be working for the power broker. But they ran out of time, and they were like, "Well, let's just make Sharon the power broker, and we'll worry about that later." <laughs> so I think what happened is that is they decided to make her the power broker, and it's actually she's a scrawl, and that she cha- she changes yeah. she changes to be a ma- like, and that's where the secret invasion show is going to play in yeah. is because. This is all going to lead into Armor Wars, which Armor Wars is going to show more, is going to lead into, into Secret Invasion. Um, so, yeah. So, yes. Look, yes, these turns up, too. There are things <laughs> from the comics that I don't even know that much about, and they're probably too much to get into here. Yeah. I actually, you reminded me, I have one more thing about Falcon and Winter Soldier. Go ahead. The shield. They made a big stink about to Walker about returning the shield. Oh, my God. Of course you have a shield. There you go. It's the actual shield, too. Is for it? Falcon and the Winter Soldier. <laughs> I can't hold this right now because it's there's no room for it. I can, but um, there you go. the uh, they make a big stink to Walker about returning the shield, but then he doesn't even have it. <laughs> well, you no, know, but then Sam has it and nobody brings it up. Walker makes it very clear that he thinks the shield rightfully belongs to him, mm-hmm. but then he never tells Sam, "Hey, that's my shield." Yeah, he just kind of accepts he's captain. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's so quick. Everything just, is so quick, and he he tries to kill Sam and Bucky. An episode earlier, but then the very next episode, they're bantering alongside each that other. That episode where he where they fight, that did was you so realize cool. what song was playing? No, it was the same song that they played when uh, in uh, Civil War when oh, really? Bucky and Cap were fighting Iron Man. Huh? Every huh. it was the same song that they played, like that sad like. That makes sense. I was honestly expecting Walker to say something like "That's my shield" or something, but I What's felt like they were, I'm Captain America. Well, I felt like they were trying to avoid the exact thing that Tony said. The mm-hmm. shield belongs to me because they did it too. Oh, that's the other thing. They tried to give Sam his, uh, I can do this all day moment. And it just never landed. No, because no. Carly's trying to hit him and she's like, fight back. And he says, no. And I think that's supposed to be his, I can do this all no, day moment. I don't think so. But I mean, they, Maybe we'll they tried to give him that like high point of Steve. Uh, but, but yeah, let's move on to the next stuff. Falcon Winter Soldier. I highly recommend you watch it. It's yes. Really thumb good up. Show. I have my thumb up. <laughs> Confirm, good please. Show. His thumb is up. In, Another in show. Upward, skyward direction. Hang on. Well, I'm going to Google every character that's in this. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> There's not a what? lot. It's just I don't know a lot about Mortal Kombat. Spoiler alert. That's what we're talking about. Mortal Kombat, which I haven't watched yet, but I need to because I didn't realize it came out already. So just want to say fantastic film. Yeah. Unbelievably good. For, what is it? And it's probably because I didn't have a lot of faith in it, so it blew it blew my mind how good this film actually Ratings was. Ratings disagree with you. Six point three on IMDb, fifty five percent Rotten Tomatoes, forty four percent Metacritic, but eighty seven percent of Google users liked the movie. 
I don't know. A lot of people seem to like it. The only problem this what film has... Mortal Kombat. Oh, oh okay. Uh, the only problem this film has is... it's there, There's one character, Kano, that carries the film because he's so funny. <laughs> uh, but also, the movie just... When, you're, when they're not, like, fighting, all of the other stuff just drags on and, like... The top, mm. the the build the build up to this whole thing just drags on. It's a very wow. slow, like boring film. Mm. But once they, but every so often you, they pepper in another fight, and it's like, whoa, that's crazy. Like, <laughs> uh, I will, I, this film's bloody, as bloody as I told you in the first five minutes of the film. Uh, we see the fight between Scorpion, uh, and. Uh, Sub Zero mm-hmm. before they get they become like their demon forms or whatever yeah. they are, uh, and <laughs> Scorpion oh. stabs someone in the forehead and it just oh. shoots gushes blood. Oh, you what are you looking at? Tom and Jerry because it came up on the top and I had to look at it. Five point two on IMDb, eighty five percent of Google users liked it, thirty one percent Rotten Tomatoes, thirty two percent Metacritic. Wow. Oh, could have told you that was gonna happen. Yeah. Um, Did that nobody was pretty apparently pretty good though. I didn't watch that. It's the Bob Odenkirk one. Hmm. Now, when you say Rotten Tomatoes, are you talking about... It's an aggregate the, score. Yeah, the, so, the fan or the critic? No, the audience review is an 87%, and the tomato meter is a 55%. So, like, the critics hated it, but 87% of the, of the it, viewers, love, like, of audience, loved it. I would love to see a breakdown of the disparity between critics <laughs> and actual user reviews. It's pretty insane. Uh the weird thing is, this film had a had a budget of fifty five million, and it almost made its money back in box office hmm. for the theaters. Almost, yeah. It's, it made fifty which 50. movie one million uh, Mortal Kombat. Okay, when did it come out though? Uh, April sixteenth. Wow, really? So yeah. it's it's still got time to make its money. That? It'll, it'll mm-hmm. be profitable, maybe not by much, but um, there's only one character in it that's new, and that's Cole Young. Mm. Uh, he's never been in Mortal Kombat ever. Still. Oh my god! I I want to like I don't are we okay like do you want to just spoil this or not really because I kind of want to watch it. Okay, so just say like acting is pretty good. Uh, Kano steals the show. Hilarious Australian dude. So every yeah. joke he practically follows. I guess from what I understand his his story like in the games too. He just insults and disrespects everybody. Yeah. There's not a single person that he respects or treats respectively. Like he meets <clears throat> like the 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 guy that's putting it together for the Mortal Kombat tournament. Um Raiden. Like he straight up insults Raiden straight to his face. And it, I'm I'm trying I'm, I'm trying to dance around like some of the stuff. Um we get uh, fatalities. People, someone says the word fatality after they kill somebody. <laughs> it does happen. Um, we get an actual fatality that I know is from the games hmm. uh, because I've seen it. And I told you about who it I, was. I think do everyone's you, looked up uh, Mortal Kombat fatality compilations. Yeah. I mean, do you want me but to say... say? I forget the name of the guy. The hat, right? Yeah, Liu Kang. Okay, yeah. Uh, Liu Kang is the guy that has like a razor blade mm-hmm. around his hat. And it, in his like video game fatality, he throws it in the ground and it just spins like a saw blade. Mm-hmm. And then he just runs them against the, the saw blade. He does that in this. And that's how he gets his win. It's Is Aaron Black in this? Incredible. Aaron Black. The guy with the gun. No. The cowboy man. No. Damn. See, when, um, when I saw He's always this, been one of my favorites. When, this, when I saw this movie cool. was coming out, I was hoping that it was going to be some some plot of like, one of the characters becoming a main character and then fighting through everyone and winning till the end. And then I wanted it to like start to zoom out. And then you see that like transition and then it would just show out to a game. It's just some kid playing in an arcade. <laughs> and then, be then, cool. be, then be like, Oh cool. I actually did it. I'm, like, I'm sorry. They... I have the wrong character. Kung Lao is the one who has the, the hat. Oh. That's a, that's mm. a razor blade. Um, the problem is they would just look at this point. They would just look derivative of the Lego movie and uh, Jumanji. If they did that, I think this film did the right thing. Uh, it's clear we're getting more. Mm. They're planning <laughs> on doing a sequel, which I I'm ready for it. If if 
Oh man, it's so good. It's such yeah, a good film. I wish money back. Go, make, maybe make we'll it talk again. about it like in a spoiler episode, the next episode. If you give you guys time to watch it, maybe we'll come together. Mm. Maybe we can sit down and watch it together or something. Um, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. That would be fun. Incredible film. Incredibly entertaining. I laughed very hard. Give it a score out of eighteen. Out of eighteen, uh, I'd say sixteen. Probably 16. sixteen out of eighteen. 1619. Wow. Yeah. So I dumb it. I give it, I give it, I bring two points away from it just because the, like, the lows are very low. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's very boring at times. But, okay. Uh, it almost like, it's kind of like a roller coaster. So, like, at a roller coaster, when you get the ups and you have that downhill swing, you're like, woo, we're getting it. But then you get that uphill where it's just like, all right. <laughs> you're waiting. I thought of a better scale. That's what it. That's what it pretty much is. On like. a scale of every movie, between The Room and Citizen Kane, where does it place? Oh my! I'm just. You don't have to actually answer that because there's too yeah. many movies between. Yeah, those. I don't. I, I can't. <laughs> but that would be a fun scale. Um, but yeah, that's like. Once you have those waiting parts and you're getting up to the up above the hill, but once you get down, it's always worth the wait. Like going down, in my opinion, is worth the wait. It's like the Pacific Rim. Boy, yeah. Like it's <laughs> so, so good. So worth the, worth the time. Resound- and that's um, available on HBO Max and in theaters. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Uh, behind you, if you want to pull some props here, say another thing. For another, those of you that can't see, a trailer came you out. Can. I didn't watch this trailer yet. Oh, well, you should. Uh, Shang-Chi trailer just came out and they just uh, released all of the. All of the Marvel Legends action figure versions of them. Yeah. Oh, did uh, did you guys see where um, someone someone out there in the internet world they saw that and said, "Wow, I'm so glad that uh, Marvel's having their first Asian superhero." And like everyone was like, <laughs> "Huang, yeah, yeah." And they're like, "Huang, we yeah. want him. We want his yeah. movie." Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> but this is uh, Shang Chi in the Legend of the Ten Rings, which is uh, the Mandarin, uh, mm-hmm. and this. It's what it's clear is Mandarin does exist. He's real. Um, and in this case where it used to be in the Marvel comics, the 10 rings are actually rings. We just did that with the Infinity Stones and probably because they were afraid of it being too much. Uh, this is who I believe is going to be the Mandarin in the film. But see these rings around his arms? Starting mm-hmm. um, I don't think so. No, it's not. Um, but uh, he has five rings on each arm around his arm. Mm-hmm. Those are the 10 rings, I think. Uh, um, so that's why I think this is going to be the Mandarin. This is who it's going to end up being like the okay. main villain or the Mandarin gives the 10 rings to a fighter of his choice in a tournament. Or the Mandarin it actually was Ben Kingsley all along. Hmm. I mean, and he was playing Aldrich Killian for a fool. That would be pretty pretending cool. pretending to be an idiot. That would be pretty cool. But there is a scene where I think it's this guy. He's like sitting on a throne uh, so, well, the reason I also think it's a, it's a champion is in like, if, from what I remember, I was going through stuff when I would watch the trailer. Uh, there was someone sitting on a throne, which looked like the pro- was probably going to be the Mandarin, but he had longer hair and this guy has shorter hair mm. in this action figure. So I'm assuming they Kingsley. might be different people. I have to go back. And, and they're going to, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to strike Iron Man three from the cannon. God, I would be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, and it's woman. This so is you have Marvel's main character, Katie. Katie. You have main character, you have bad guy, and you have woman. Yeah, so all the, char- yeah, all me, the characters you need for a movie. Here, let me talk to you. Let me give you an idea who this character is. This is Katie from Shang Chi. Uh, Marvel's Katie is Shang Chi's oldest friend. Is a free spirited and fierce and fiercely loyal. That's all it says. So she's Mulan. <laughs> yeah. Um, Shang Chi's father, uh, Wen Wu. Wen Wu is the feared leader of the Ten Rings organization which has lurked in the shadows of the MCU since the very beginning. Ooh. Literally. There's, there's symbols in Iron Man 1. Yeah. And then uh, Shang-Chi himself, uh, trained since childhood by, a mysteri- by the mysterious Ten Rings organization, Shang-Chi must confront the past he thought he left behind when he is drawn back into his father's web. So there you go. Okay. Mm. So the Mandarin so, probably exists. It's just this. So they're the League of Shadows. Yes. Okay. From Batman, remember? Man, wouldn't it be crazy if Liam Neeson is was, the Mandarin? Oh my god, <laughs> he's so mad. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'd cry. In the that theater. would be that would be nuts. So I would nut. 
so yeah, that's all right. So those are those toys just just released out of the blue. They surprised us because we didn't wow. know they were releasing. And you already have them. Yeah, because you I, have a problem. Right? I saw them on Target's website. You you have a problem. You've got last time I was here. There's a big, huge Moss Eisley Lego set here, which I'm fine with because Lego's dope. Mm -hmm. But now there's some woman. That standing was that there. was in this glass case. I just oh. moved her out so I could use the other shelf because oh, it didn't okay. look it didn't look good as like a Twitch background. So I put that there. Gotcha. Uh, the reason I took the the Moss Eisley Cantina down is I realized uh, that the the glass case that I put in it hung over this, oh. and I didn't want the cats to jump in and knock it off, or any of us to be like sitting here recording and one of us knock it or hit. That would have been I, deeply it, unfortunate. So I was like, okay, I'll I'll put it back in its box. I'll put everything back in the box, and then I'll just put it back together. Because fun fact, the Moss Eisley Cantina's box set is actually designed to let you put it back in the box without taking it apart. Oh, that's kind of dope. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So it's so time consuming. Well, it's 5,000 it parts or something like that. Yeah. But I wrapped it I wrapped in a little bit of bubble wrap just to protect it, mm -hmm. protect all the pieces, and then I put it back in the box. And yeah. then, so yeah, that's dope. that's a thing. Anything you guys want to close with because we are coming to the end. Any Anything else you guys would like to say to the world? Tell everyone. Uh... I'm glad to be back. Thanks for the welcome, yeah, the warm you're, welcome. You're, you're, I'm glad that you back. guys. Good I'm job. glad that you guys mm -hmm. were willing to accept me back. Yep, uh, we are, and, but never again. And seem to have missed me. Don't leave again. Uh, well, we'll be let's scared. Try not to have any more family emergencies. Then. Okay, deal. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> That's and a good thing. Okay, I'm fine with that. <laughs> find, find the the fountain of youth and keep all of my relatives alive. There we go. We'll be okay. We're gonna have to put that in the contract. Yes. You're. You need to tell your relatives that con they're contractually obliged <laughs> to not die. To not die. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what Alex Trebek said when he announced he had cancer. He said, oh, I'm yeah. contractually obliged to do this for five more years. So, so I have to beat it. <laughs> yeah. Zach, anything That's you want to close with? Yeah, you know. Um, we kind of steamrolled you this one. I'm sorry. No. No, well, I did. I haven't seen the things that were out. Yeah. And like, I, I think I, I shined the last two. Uh, We'll do another the episode. Last two ones. We'll do like uh, a re a redo of this episode mm. and have you guys watch the stuff. Okay, we'll review, yeah. especially all... um, Falcon and Winter Soldier, because like Cap, yeah, because I do want to hear is, your perspective. Yeah, on it. Cap is my favorite hero, mostly because it's I don't care who you are, the values come first. Yeah, and that's who Sam it, is, and I, that's and, and I, that's exactly where there's like, a cool exchange that uh, happens between Sam and Zemo. Mm. You remember who Zemo was, right? Yeah. Uh, he he was the villain in uh, yeah, Civil sadly, War. Sa sadly, the worst built up, but yet still oh the coolest God, villain. God, they killed God, it. this movie, this series is so good with it how they treat Zemo. Him. It him fixed him. and Sam have a conversation that's really interesting. Is it, it is it where the meme comes from where he's out of no. line, but he's right? <laughs> no, that's a funny scene, though. I feel like that's me almost any time I talk to someone where they're like, you shouldn't say that. But also, you got a point. Yeah. <laughs> How could someone say something so brave yet so controversial? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't have anything. So thank you all for listening. If you'd like to follow us on social media and everything, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pop Culture Unboxing. If you want to follow me in particular, you can find me on Twitter, Matt Ross VO, or on Twitch at Jan Jingle. Real I stream quick. once in a while. Hey, real quick. You didn't acknowledge my new art that I put on the wall. Did you cross-stitch those yourselves? I did. Yourself. Uh, did you ourselves? No. <laughs> no, I didn't cross this <laughs> off. I was like, <laughs> wondering how no. bored you got. <laughs> no, I did paint a bunch of miniatures. I saw those. If you, all, all those are my newest creations, and those are my best work. Okay, those are one hundred percent. Show them off on stream. I will. Okay. Those are one hundred percent my best work. Well, if you want to see those, where can they? Where can people see them? Uh, currently on Riki Tiki Twenty. Uh, crap it's Riki. you forget it too that makes me feel so much less bad there you <laughs> go it's, it's ricky tiki 252 uh on twitch i now twitch uh i twitch tuesday tuesdays thursdays and saturdays uh and that schedule will change i'm gonna start being more uh i'm gonna do destiny i stream destiny but i'm gonna also do uh stream some more other stuff i'm gonna be more wholesome content i'll stream other stuff with you after this destiny season ends because that's what I'm, I'm just crunching to get all the stuff done before the season ends, and I, I want to. us to finish Battle Block Theater. I do too. I since I I'm gonna gift him the game because okay. I think it'll run on his, and I want the three of us to play that it would together. Be fun. Can you do three? I think it'll be four. Yeah. You know, okay. I may just never leave this podcast because I just keep getting free games between the two of you. Because I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah, because like, I bought him Destiny. The exp I bought him. Uh, I just say like Destiny's Beyond free. Well, yeah, he was doing free to play, and I bought him Beyond Light. Yeah. By the way, <laughs> I, you weren't there too. 
that crappy raid that we tried to do that we all failed I heard about because it and everyone I'm was so glad I wasn't there. Dude, so stressful. I had to buy Shadow Keep just to play it, and we didn't beat the raid because it was so bad. <laughs> we did. It, did they were the worst raid group I you, ever. After I think it was after you left, we went through and crushed so through funny. that. I was sitting there. Real, I, was I gotta like, level up, and then I can yeah. raid with Dude, you guys. I was. You can do the uh, Sh- Guardian Salvation and w- Last Wish now. Mm-hmm. Their their light is the same as the base light. I uh, so whatever level you are now, you're over level. Last wish is really fun. I'll, I'll do last wish. With <laughs> whatever you. level, I might All be right. like level five. I uh, <laughs> Thursday, that's fine. Uh, Thursday and Saturday, one of those days. Pick a day. Thursday and Saturday. I can't do Thursday. I already said I do GMs, but we can do it Saturday. I right. think I have something Saturday, but cancel d- it depending on what times you guys are available. Uh, uh, it won't be till later. So, okay, either. wait. We'll figure this out after the show. Uh, you said your Twitch. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, that's my Twitch, Riki Tiki two five two, and uh, Red Steak Ride on Instagram. You can find me at Little Leaf, at Little underscore Leaf L I E F. Make sure you get the underscore because I'm not a middle aged Brazilian woman. Yeah, that's important. It is important. Thank you all for listening. Yeah, thank you. Bye. I love I you. I have some announcements in the future to tell, so I'm excited to sit down and talk to everyone about it. Okay, Ryan, announce cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. Bye. I love you. Bye. Bye.